The Cotswolds are, as a kind of hill range, they're nested between two big rivers, the mouth of one, the Severn. So we're on the edge of like the escarpment and that's where the mouth of the Severn runs out into the sea. And then on the other side of the range, you've got these like finger valleys that are the source of the Thames. So you've got kind of the end of one river and the birth of another, both on the same hill range. My name is Louisa. We are at the Glorious Gravel in the Cotswolds. I'm Gail, I'm a cyclist based in Bristol. So I'm Rupert, I live in the Wye Valley. I basically carry around what I'd carry to race an ultra with, mm. with me on most rides. Classic, like kitchen sink fridge. Uh, we're here to race the Glorious Gravel Cotswolds edition. What events have you done in the past? Uh, oh, well, all sorts, like right from road events, racing, time trials, crits, stuff like that when I was younger, triathlon. Uh, but then more recently I started to explore the longer distance events. So last year I did Tour Divide and Atlas Mountain Race. Um, and I guess I started that ultra journey with TCR, which was a pretty, pretty uh, long distance start. But yeah, I, I like those events, but I also like just riding my bike on the weekends. I didn't plan this, just to be clear. <laughs> I just had it's some just spontaneous environmental hack. power cord and thought, yeah, actually. What's happening here? Uh, so Rupert's doing a spontaneous environmental hack on use of cable ties. I love it. Bit of power cord, just sorting himself out a new number attachment. <laughs> be more Rupert. <laughs> That's what we need. You have a rabbit in your van. I do, yeah. What's so, the story with the rabbit in the van? Uh, so I was living in a van down in Cornwall and an Irish traveller came up to me with a teeny tiny rabbit and asked me if I asked me if I wanted it. So yeah, Percy has now been living in the van with me for the last three years. So this is Pers. Um, he is maybe the fattest Netherlands dwarf in existence. But we worked out he's done about 50,000 miles, so he's pretty well travelled. <laughs> Where's the furthest place he's gone? He has been the whole way up to Scotland. Yeah, so he's been around, around the Isle of Skye, um, all up in the Outer Hebrides, so that's, yeah, that's probably the furthest he's been. I normally like to do a bit of um, reading about the places I'm going, but I haven't had a chance today, so we'll see. That's also nice, it gives you like a, a new perspective, yeah, like yeah. not knowing what's going to come up. Yeah, so got an open mind and just gonna feel the place as we go and enjoy the company of these lovely riders and the riders hope you meet some other people maybe along the way. I'm looking forward to seeing more of the Cotswolds. I actually haven't cycled much around here at all. And then getting to know you and Gail and Rupert as well. So yeah, really good. We are very close to the Babington Estate, really popular area for horse riding around here. A good chance you will see some of them when you are out on the trails. If you do see horse riders, just let them know you're approaching, slow down, check it's safe to pass before you go by. Have a safe and enjoyable day. Hopefully the rain stays away. See you at the end. Thank you. Morning. Badminton's super well known for eventing and I think people, well, also in terms of the area as well, in terms of it being quite agricultural and is the, is the technical word stud, studding? No idea. Studs. These are all new words to me. You've never been up this way before? Yeah, so this is a new trail to me. There's actually a National Trust's uh, property or estate just up here um, that I've actually yet to visit. So yeah, it's nice. Nice to go exploring.
so we've just come up a holloway which is like a sunken lane like and around it we've got pretty flat fields i guess where the rocks allowed the weathering of people basically going across the landscape but in relatively recent history it would have been cattle being moved across particularly out of wales to london and they would have come along these these tracks which are also known as drovers roads and in, in places um, to take cattle to market and now we get to enjoy riding them as yeah lots of people have in in their lifetime got a broken chain pedal to the metal a bit hard and it <laughs> too much power ripped <laughs> Yeah, I'm normally team hardtail. I haven't convinced myself that I need a gravel bike yet. Uh, but you, you were pretty like, you were pretty happy on the last ascent, like. <laughs> so it's been, it's so far, what we, we're not even halfway around the route yet, are we? No, we're, we're like okay. not even a quarter, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the journey so far, bumpy grass, not the one on a gravel bike, like hardtail all the way. We just did a fun gravel descent. <sighs> did tip the balance, quite enjoyed it. Um, yeah, just it made it seem more technical, a bit more. I had to concentrate, and yeah, it was it was fun. So yeah, we'll see. The journey continues. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll get an update at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to grab a bike, be, or are you going to stick to your mountain bike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. No, you, you gotta drizzle biscoff. <laughs> I think if anything, I'd be Nutella. Or like biscoff's too sweet, but I'm not like a I'm not like a salted caramel kind of gal. It's too much. My blood runs to sugar. <laughs> I've got a sweet tooth through and through. Enjoying it? Ah, oh. yeah, it's been pretty good. Um. Not so much now, we're on an uphill. But as a general rule, it's been a really good mix of terrain. Hopefully less. I don't know whether to believe Gail anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> I don't know anything about flowers, but um, I like collecting them on rides. And if I haven't smelt the flowers, it's not been a good ride, really. But knowing the species is, is one thing, but appreciating its smell is probably what matters. We're on the Foss Way, which is a Roman road built in the first and second century AD. And it goes all the way from Exeter to Lincoln. Um, and it's it's still vaguely in formation. We're not entirely sure how much of it's rideable. A lot of it is roads, um, but then there's also this amazing gravel. A 
I would help, but I've got a job to do. That's fine. Film the... We don't want to lose the key though. <laughs> no, that's Open not what The car key is precious. Do you want me to put it back in? No, I've got less stuff in. Oh, it's not an automated Same size, but it's got a click. Easy off. Have you not got as bad as you? Oh, I do, but I'm just. Oh, you just don't want to use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's while you've got the. Yeah. I suppose if you didn't use it now, then you're just not going to do it, are you? Exactly. And also, it means I, um, if this one, because I couldn't find the culprit, I couldn't find the whatever's given so me a puncture. So at least you spare. So, <laughs> yeah. We're what risking, we're going in and hoping that it, it isn't still in there. Is Percy, as in like how? I don't know, like three. Okay, so when you got him, was he like a little bunny? Like super tiny. Oh, like, yeah, like put it yeah, in your palm of your hands. <laughs> yeah, and then he grew. What a chunk mm. now! This is the first time you've seen a, a rabbit in a van. Absolutely. This is, I think, the first time I've seen a pet set up like this in a van. You know, dogs might have like a cage or a bed, but like I've never seen, yeah, a small animal van dwelling it's great any takeaways from today's event <laughs> i thought you're going to be like any takeaways <laughs> i was like yeah so i think maybe my van now i can feel like i can take my chickens on holiday with me <laughs> i'll just make them a little hutch in the back can you imagine that smell <laughs> it would be grim <laughs> they can't be trained i i think yeah yeah maybe Advise maybe against chickens. chickens in a van Huh? Advise against chickens in yeah, a Yeah, I'm not sure that's... Yeah, chickens aren't, aren't van-dwelling animals, are they? <laughs> um, takeaways from this event. <laughs> Segway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think maybe my takeaways from this event are don't borrow your partner's bike without checking its uh, its tyres first. That's a good point. I, yeah. We were going to do... What, what is your... Yeah. This is your first gravel ride on a gravel bike. It, is it? I mean... Kind of? Yeah, it's my first gravel event on a gravel bike, I would say. What um, would you say? Are you going to look forward to getting back on your mountain bike, or is this...? I'm not bit... I'm still Team Hardtail, um, but it was fun. Yeah. Would ride again. I think the Cotswolds lived up to their quintessential quality. Um, no, it was a good route, yeah. Some nasty little valleys, some nice open plains. Um, and yeah, it was actually really cool to see loads of different like a mosaic of different bike types and stuff so um yeah it was a nice course and good fun and just about kept dry most of the time and what plants have we ended up with i have no idea what plants these are but um i'll do a little id with an app when i get home and um commit them to memory as best i can so are you gonna press them i might consider pressing them yeah Put them in a book. That's how you do that, isn't it? The DIY way. Mm. Um, do you have to put like paper, like tissue yeah, paper? Tissue so paper you yeah, tissue paper. Yeah. book. Yeah, I do like that idea. Um, I'm the only one who didn't have a mechanical today, so I didn't have a mechanical either. Well, in front. Of <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was really good. Um, I'd say be careful if you're riding in the Cotswolds of potential sidewall slashes. Um, yeah, there's loads of really big rocks around, but maybe should have checked the weather forecast. Yeah, typical English weather. Yeah, but we managed to get a majority of the way back before it started raining, so that was really good. Would you do it again? Yeah, I'd do it again. <laughs>